guys, it is so good to see you guys. And yes, English like to claim everything. See, I'm just basically a derivative of him, I mean, I need to, just with a bit of sunlight. Who believes that Miles needs a bit more vitamin D in his life? Come on, there it is. We love this, and it's so good to be here. I am thrilled to be back at HTBB. Tell the person next to you that God is going to move today in your life. Come on, tell them, tell them. Come on, tell them like you really mean it. Come on, tell them God is going to change your life today. Come on. There it is. Who believes it? Who believes it? There we go. Whoa. I am so excited for this. I'm really believing God is going to do something major today. And happy Father's Day. Uh, Come on, give it up for all the dads. Amazing. You guys are amazing. Hey, um. You know, I'm just going to get stuck straight into it, and just uh, I'm so thrilled to be here, uh, and I'll tell you a bit about my wife and kids later, and please, thank you for look, those of you who've been friends with Eleanor here, we've sent her over here from Rice to explore Rice in KL, come on, so um, yeah, g- give us some love next time, Man, we love this, we're so excited for that, and hey, um, you know what I believe, I believe that this is the Word of God, who believes that? I believe that, who, come on, come on, that's not the HTBB I know, come on now, who believes this is the Word of God? There it is. There it is. You know, I believe that this word, every time it goes out, there's a promise. Every time it goes out, it never returns to him empty. There's a promise. You know what that means? I, as this goes out, by his spirit, the word that goes out today is going to change your life. I can just literally get up and just read it and sit down. I'm tempted. I'm tempted, Miles. Tempted. And you know what? God's going to do his thing. Who believes that? I'm going to pray now and ask the Lord to do it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask, Lord, that your word would not return to you empty. Lord, even passages that we've read so many times, bring them to life. Help us see new things. Help us find out about what it is that you want with our lives that will We'll, we'll understand it afresh and new. And Lord God, anybody here in this building, Lord, that does not know you, as your, know you as their father, has not given their life to you, Jesus, has not understood what you've done for them, yeah, Lord, I pray that they would come to you today. We ask for changed lives. Changed lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know what? I believe this is the Word of God, and when I say I'm just going to read it, let's go. Because there are stories in this Bible that you may have gone to church for a long time hearing, and I've grown up as a Christian, I've grown up, uh, you know, hearing this story, this story that I'm about to tell you, but it's only starting to take, I, I think the story I'm about to tell you is probably one of the most preached passages in the world, and I know certainly as an evangelist kind of guy, I preach this story more than almost any other passage in my whole life. To the point where I'm like, can I not speak about it again, please? And even this week, it is coming to life in deeper ways. You ready? Who's heard of the story of the prodigal son? And now you know what? You're like, I know. You already switched off a bit. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, come on, give us something different. Not the prodigal. And you're like, I know, I know. But are you ready? Who believes right now that you could see it in a deeper level? You could understand. Who, who believes that? Ready? The prodigal son, right? Look, look at this. Look. Chapter 15, here it is. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger one said to the father, give me my share of the estate, so he divided his property between them. And what happened after this is this, the younger son, what happened? He, 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 he took the father's inheritance, he took it, and he went, and he squandered the wealth and wild living. Verse 14 says, if he spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, he was in need, he went to hide himself out the citizens of that country, who sent him to the field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. This guy has hit rock bottom. We're talking about a Jewish man in a pigsty. We're talking about, this is about, this is, the, this is a picture called the bottom of the bottom. He cannot come back. Actually, you know when he's going to come back? There's this ceremony that they do in that culture called Kezezar. You ever heard about this? It is ridiculous. It's a, I mean, in terms of like how painful this, this thing is, it's a cultural thing that if anyone takes an inheritance from a Jewish, a Jewish family and loses it to Gentiles, non-Jewish people, and they ever want to return, this is actually a, a Jewish custom, it's a very commonly practiced in the village structure there, if they ever want to return, they'll perform this thing called Kezezar. As that person came back, they would take a, a clay jar and they would break it in front of them and say, you are broken to us like this pot is broken and we disown you, you go. 
That is why that guy, that's why he had nothing left to do except to come back and say, maybe I'll be a slave. I'll just be a servant. And in that moment, what happens? Read this, read this. I think after anything about Jesus on the cross, I don't think we ever see anything in Scripture that has more captured the love of God and how He wants to relate to us in this verse. Ready? Here, have a look. In Luke 15, in Luke 15, it says this. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Can you picture that? Just, just do an action where you're just grabbing and just, come on, show me, show me, get a feel of it. This is what it's, yeah, I'm seeing, I'm, look at that, oh man, I'm seeing some, all the, mostly the women did that and the men are just like, <laughs> and you know why? It's because men don't generally like to do that, do they? If you sit next to a man, just go look at them now and say, give me a big hug and they'll be like, this wasn't done not just because he was a male, but because he was also in this Middle Eastern culture, and men don't do that. They don't run. That was shameful. They don't do that. Fathers don't do that. I'll tell you what, my wife, you know what, she said to me, she said to me, you know, you know what, we should, we should do something and preach the Asian version of the prodigal son. You know, because what happens is when the son comes home, right, he comes back and he's like, he's like, Father, I've sinned, because he's you know, squandered everything on prostitutes and wild living. Father, and I said, what would it be? And Naomi said, I've got an idea. You could say this. This would be the Asian version. The, the son comes back and he says, Father, I've sinned. I studied arts. I didn't do law or medicine. I've sinned against heaven and earth. I'm an arts degree student. You know, and the father's like, how dare you? Get back out there. You know, you waste all our education. You know, and, and all these things. The thing is, in Asian, in Asian times, there is so much connection in our culture to performance. There's so much, there's so much um, distance. And there's so much, let's just be straight, right? It's Father's Day today. If it's okay with you, I'm just going to go a little bit deeper in terms of the emotions that might Touch a little bit of stuff that we don't like to talk about. Are you guys up for that? You sure? Everyone's like, yes. <laughs> you know what? I believe God's going to undo some stuff here because all of us, no matter what kind of father you've had, some of you have had really hard fathers, really bad, maybe even abusive fathers. I'm really, really feel for you if that's you. Some of you have had great fathers. I've got a good father. He was born in Saranban, by the way. And, uh, he, um, he was a great dad, but still, no dad is perfect. Everyone knows that, right? Some of the dads right now are all thinking about their failings. Poor dads, I'm feeling for you. If you sit next to dad, say, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to be perfect. Right? And the dads are still going. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The truth is all of us have these things that distance ourselves from from, our, from dads, and we take these things, we put that on our picture of God, but this picture in Luke chapter 15 is what? But he, he was waiting for him. It wasn't even like, you know, if you were an Asian dad, you'd be like, you don't come home, right? You just sort of sit there and like, and if they want, you beg, right? You beg. You beg to come back. But this father was looking. He was looking and waiting. And then he ran to his son and he kissed him. That desire that we all have, let's be honest, here's the bit that's going to feel a bit uncomfortable. I reckon a lot of us have dads that are good or um, are people who provide. Oh, sorry, I forgot about this. People upstairs, isn't there? Just realize that. Hey, guys. <laughs> you know what? That hurts my neck. I'll just come back in the middle. So, <laughs> you know, a whole bunch of us have dads who provide. They do a good job with that. They worked hard. We know that there's respect. But there is a craving that each of us have for intimacy. There is a desire that each of us have to be loved. And so often in our own culture, because we take our own experience of fathers who, whether they're bad or just whatever, or good, they're still fall short. And we look at that and we take that to the heavenly father and we think, I know he's meant to be my father. I can say it in my head, but what does it mean for me to be his child? And you import that and you decide that's what the father's like. But we need God today to interpret for us what being a father is like. Everyone with me? Everyone with me? We need God to say, no, this is what a father is like. And let me tell you what his father is like. Jesus says, I'll tell you what the father's like. The father's like a father who runs, who runs and runs and runs towards his son. 
and he kisses him and he puts a robe on him in the next verses. He puts a robe on him and he uh, uh, he puts a ring on his finger and he says, you are my son. He said, quick, bring the best robe. Put it on him, put a ring on his finger, stand on his feet, bring the fattened calf and kill it. This is like, this guy's like, this son has come back and he's like, I want to do, this guy's basically having a durian party. That is my picture of the party, right? Anyone here know, anyone here love a bit of durian? I'm telling you, I am obsessed I am obsessed about preaching the gospel, except in Malaysia, I will only preach in during season, if you're coming from Australia, right? Miles, take note, only during, I'm, I'm booked for the rest of the year, but during season I'm open. You know, and I've been here only for 48 hours, and it is a travesty that I've had charcoal towel, I've had nasi lemak, I've had, I've had satay, I had some chicken wings, and I had uh, hamin, I had all that within one hour of being on the, on the ground. I went to that hawker centre, what was that place? Some big hawker centre, uh, right next to FGA Church, I don't know what it is, and I went there, and man, I just ordered everything within one hour, but there was no durian in my stomach. I'm not hinting. <laughs> Do you hear? There's no durian in my stomach, not hinting. Up to you, don't feel guilty, but you know the truth is this, the truth is this. Whatever we're feeling right now, wherever we are at, we need to understand that this father threw a party for the son to come back. This is the kind of father who loves you. He loves you that much. And I want to ask you, do you feel like you are a child of God? So I'm going to ask you, who are you? And you're going to say, I'm a child of God. Ready? Who are you? Oh, well, that was good. That was good. That was good. That was like just repeating me. Right? No, go again. Now I want you to feel it. Ready? Who are you? Good. All the way through this, I'm going to ask you that. We're going to see what that, how that lands because God the Father, in this picture, what he did was he threw a party. And this is the thing I've, to- I've preached. Everything I've said so far, I've preached this. I lost track. I've preached it so many times. I can do it with my eyes closed. I can. Now, here's the deal. This week, this week, I've been preaching for 20 years. This week, I realized even though I have preached about the older son before, I've realized that I am really, still, after all this time, I can say I'm a child of God. I can believe he's my father, and I do. But I don't know whether still my core identity, my deepest, deepest, you know what I'm talking about? The deepest way that I see myself is as a child. I, I, I know it in, my, in here, right? Everyone, everyone touch your head like this. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. But now, do I know it in here? Everyone, everyone this? And I believe today God's going to drop what's here into here. Everyone ready? Because for me, I've struggled with it. I'm going to be honest, okay? Someone, a wise guy, a wise pastor, I said to him, how am I going to talk about this? He said, just be, just be real, right? Tell him. Tell him that you struggle with it. I'm like, really? Okay, you ready? I think I struggle with... with allowing God to love me. I'm not even talking about bad stuff I've done. I, I think I'm, I'm talking about just, I struggle to allow him to love me just because he does. I'm so used to doing things. And do you know who else was like that? The older son. Have a look at these verses. A bit more from Luke 15. It says this. Um, so he, he, uh, he came back, he got kissed, the father came, I've sinned against heaven on you, the father said, bring the fountain calf, and then what happened was this, meanwhile, the older son was in the field, and when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing, and so he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on, and, he, and the, father said, your, the servant said, your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound, and the older brother became angry, and and refuse to go in. That's a very disrespectful thing. Can you imagine your parents throwing a party and you just go, I'm not even going inside. No amount of durian smell is going to make me come inside. I'm going to stay outside. And this is what he did. He disrespected his father. And then he said this. He refu- and angry, refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. And, and, but he answered his father, look, all these years I've been, everyone say slaving. All the, one more time. All these years I've been for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, not, not my, my brother or, you know, not the dude I grew up with and shared a room with, whatever, but this son, 
of yours who has squandered your property, your property has come home, kill the fattened calf for him. And it's this, my son. Everyone say son. The father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad your brother came back, he's dead and alive again. I looked at that story, I preached it so many times I can't count. But I still see myself in that older brother. I still feel that there's something about me that I just cannot accept. I just, I do it, I do it even with good intentions, to be totally frank. Like I want to work hard for God, or you know these things? Not, not to earn my salvation, I know, but I'm just talking about I just want to keep doing stuff because that's what God wants and that'll make him pleased. And, and what would it look like if God says, no, I'm just pleased with you? You know, at the baptism of Jesus when it's commissioned, it strikes me that, 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 that at that moment when he gets baptized and God the Father speaks over him and says, this is my son with you, with whom I'm well pleased. You know, it strikes me that he was pleased with Jesus. And yes, part of it is his righteousness, but also he was pleased with him just because he's son. Because you know how much ministry he's done at that point? Do you know how much public ministry he's done that can be recognized? How many healings he's done? How many miracles? Nothing. He hasn't started. What would it look like if you took away the things that you think are the things that God pleases, is pleased with? I'm pretty sure he is pleased with them. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But what if your core identity was able to just sit there and be received? Receive that love. Today, I believe there are people here, and also the, and the upstairs, I haven't forgotten about you. There's people here today who think and know that God is their father. And when I say, who are you? You can say, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm a child of God. Right? Who are you? And you can say that, and you can repeat that back at me, and you can believe it, and you can understand it. But today, it hasn't hit, everyone touch your hearts, here. Your core identity. And I believe that today, in this building... We have people that need to reinvent that and to see what God is doing in, in, in fixing that up from the inside. Because the truth is that the older brother, I think, is a picture of so many, for so many of us. People who have all the benefits of being a son. And God's just like, I just want to hang out with you. And we're like, we're outside. We're actually working. Man, this is intense for Father's Day, isn't it? Is it, are you feeling okay? You're not getting up too upset? It's all right? It's okay? Because, you know, for me, I just realized that I could give the worst sermon I've ever given in my entire life right now, and I'm still his son. Anyone believe that? I need to hear that so I can preach however, <laughs> how bad it goes. Right, Miles, even if Miles doesn't invite me back, ever, if he's there going, I am never having that crazy, hyper Australian dude on this stage again. You're not thinking that, are you? Good place. Not that I care because I'm his son, all right? Not that I care. But the truth is, you know, that, you, that nothing can change that fact. Do you know what's really interesting? I tell you what, this is something that I, I realized and just thought about this week. You know, if you're a Christian here and when you became a Christian, I've got to, don't, don't be humble here, but I, this, just tell me. Since you became a Christian, who feels like they've grown more in godliness? Just a little bit since you've become a Christian. A little bit. Who's grown more in godliness? Seriously, everyone's gone backwards. You become a Christian. No, no, everyone's grown. Who's grown? Grown and grown. Yeah, good. Lots of people grown. Who thinks they've grown more in joy? Yeah, they've grown more joyful. Who thinks they've, they've, they've grown more in understanding of the Bible since they first became a Christian? Everyone, yep. There's about four people who keep developing in this congregation, and 95% of people, Miles, we've got a problem, right? They, are, they became Christians at Alpha Course, and then they went backwards. No, no, no. The truth is, everyone grows. You change. You develop, right? Now, you can become more of this, more of that, more joyful, which is all part of godliness. It's all part of sanctification. It's all part of learning. Now, put your hand up if you think you became more a child of God. No. It's one of those things that you can't become more of because when you're a child, you're a child. That is why the definition of being a Christian, J.I. Packer, put this quote up. The, the J.I. Packer, uh, in Knowing God, said this, that what is a Christian? Uh, and he said this in the quote, which I'll need to be put up, which is right at the start, which is, what is a Christian? The question can be, have you got that? Yep, there it is. What is a Christian? The question can be answered in many ways, but the richest answer I know is that a Christian is one who has God as Father. Who believes that? That is the best definition of understanding uh, that being a Christian. 
You know, for me, this is really significant. I mean, this is hard. I'm on Father's Day. I don't have my, my children with me. This is my family, by the way. You want to chuck the fam- family photo up? This is what, what, they, what they look like. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Very, very lovely. 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 Sometimes. Lovely. <laughs> you know, they are lovely, and sometimes they're not. You know that. I can put up the happy photo, and, and you guys, I'm not fooling anyone who's got kids. I'm not fooling any of you. But the truth is this, they are lovely, they're also not lovely sometimes, and I'm also not lovely sometimes as a father, but I try to be lovely, and before I left, I took both my girls on a date. Now, I, that, that's pretty good, right? Come on, give me some, like, eh, father of the year, you know, no, no, I took, no. Oh, there we go, I got a clap out of that, I mean, uh, listen to the clap. Now, I, I took them on a date, and, and, and with Caitlin and Lisa, look at these beautiful girls. These are the two, two dates. Now, on this date, and Katie's holding a photo frame because that's the picture of me and Naomi standing. She, she wanted to see where we started dating. And I haven't been at that spot for 20 years. And so I went and took it to the exact fence and we took the exactly same photo, which is very lovely and um, very nice. But the thing is this. They know that dates normally, it's just pretty quick, like they're about an hour or an hour and a half, grab dinner, move on. We put aside, not one hour, not two, ready? Dad of the year, come here, 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 here. Four hours per kid. Four hours per kid. Miles right now is like, I failed as a father. Yeah, no, no, four hours, four hours. No, here's the deal. You know what was really interesting? With Caitlin, the older one, as we started going out the house, I noticed something really weird. Normally they're, you know, pretty excited to know what's going to happen. She looked a bit anxious. And I went, I'm like, I'm not letting this go. I'm just like, what's going on here, all right? So I said, hey, you looking forward to this day? And she goes, uh, yeah, yeah. And I went, she's trying to put, you know, when you sh- I can see it, she's trying to put the extra smile on. And I said, no, 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 let me ask you, are you sure? Are you looking forward to this day? She goes, yeah. I said, no, you're not. That's a yeah, nah. That's a no, yeah. What's happening? So I said, what's going on? And you know what she said? She said, well, I'm looking forward to it. And I, but, so I'm helping you say that because you don't want to hurt my feelings. But she said, four hours is a long time. <laughs> and I'm like, what's up? Are you kidding me? I'm giving you four hours of my life. You know, what do you mean four hours a long time? Right? Who doesn't want to spend four hours with me? You know, I'm not, no. And Amy's like, I don't want four hours. No. So, what happened was, she's like, I, I want, and I'm like, what? what's going on? And she said, well, normally, you know, we just go for dinner, and it's quick, and we grab something, and it's fun. And she goes, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> I'm like, I thought about it, I thought, I'm actually not sure. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I think I might run out of stuff. And you know what was interesting is, she was looking forward to it, but for her, a date was like, here's the hour and what we do, right? And she wasn't comfortable with just, she just wasn't used to just hanging. And that kind of made me a bit sad. I'm like, what's going on? And I started thinking, is this how we sometimes think about God? We're happy to go on a date with you. I mean, in a sense, you're on a date with God kind of now, you know, like you're on, it's Sunday. I booked him in. He's booked me in. I go to church. Boom. After that, I'm going to go off. And it's kind of comfortable. But are you willing to just hang? Like, what would it look like if God the Father's like, you know what, I just want to be with you. And you're like, why? I'm, I, I'm not doing anything for you. Because I didn't say I want you to do something for me. I just said I want to be with you. What does it look like to actually enjoy God? And the reason why we can't do that is not because only we're busy and blah, blah, blah. It's because we don't understand that God loves us that much. He wants a relationship with us. He wants to be here, your father, and he just loves you so much. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. I think for so many people here, so many people out there, there are so many of us, and maybe most of us, because of this Asian culture thing as well, which is so hard, where we've often got fathers who, who, who provide and do all that things, but they don't, they're not into giving a, a hug, or they're not into the, that, that affection... I think there's so many of us here right now who just cannot even come to the place where we realize that God loves us just because. So if I ask you right now, who are you? Are you able to say back, you might be able to tell the person next, the person says, who am I? 
you can say, you are loved, right? Can, can, so tell them, I'll show it, it'll be easy, it's easy. Tell me you're loved, you are loved. So tell them, tell the person next to you, you are loved. See, easy, easy, easy. You're, been, you're, you're like, you're fine, you're loved. But now try this one, try this one, and don't do it, don't do it just because I'm telling you, right? If I say, who are you this time, and you say, I am loved, okay? Like, really mean it. I mean like, I'm loved. You ready? Who are you? One more time, right here. I'm going to say it a few more. Who are you? Who are you? Every time it's getting more awkward. You want to do one more? You want one more? Because God's not tired of it. Or he's kind of like, we better finish now. Preacher's done it three times. That's, that's acceptable. Let's move on. God's like, hey, I've got all day. Who are you? Today, God is going to connect that knowledge. And he's going to drop it. Because, you know, John Owen said this. Look at this quote. It's right near the end for those on the PowerPoint. Right near the end. You want, what, this is a great quote. I missed this one in the last service, so you're getting special. Special for you, a cheap, cheap one. Okay, good one. I'll give you, I'll give you one. This, 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 this quote. The greatest sorrow and burden you can lay on the Father, the greatest unkindness you can do to him is not believe that he loves you. Now I know you guys think, yeah, I know God loves me. But I think when it means belief, I think he's right. There is so much. Can you imagine? There's a lot of things that my kids can do to hurt me. But if they ever turned around to me and said, you don't love me, and they really meant that, that breaks something deep. Do we believe that God loves us are we ready to go into that deepest place with Him? You know, for me, sometimes I think the biggest issue is that we look at God and we, he's, he's very distant from us. He's like this person that we can look at and, with, and revere, you know? We revere Him, we look at Him, and we think, you know what, and, and there's a lot of respect, and that's partly right, that's great. It's like, you know, um, you know Tim Keller, put this guy, the, the, when I see Tim Keller and I look at him, and when everyone's been talking about him because he just passed away, he's a big, for those of you who don't know, he's a big, big brain. Look at the size of the brain in that guy's head, right? He's amazing. Tim is a brain. He's, he's changed the world with his writings and thinking. But it's been really hard for me to process his passing just weeks ago. Because for me, I haven't even wrote it on social media. I don't know what to say. Because for me, that's not, I call him Uncle Tim. That's not Uncle Tim for me. Um, uh, Tim mentored me for seven years. We met every two or three months on video. He'd email me in some of the craziest moments. You know, when his dad died, he emailed me. I couldn't believe it. He emailed me within six hours of his dad dying and said, this is what I'm processing. He wrote a whole bunch of stuff. I poured out when Naomi's mum died. We, 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 we had a close For me, he's not, he's not this dude. He is this dude, but he's also this dude. This dude, when pe- this next photo, when people were, were clamming around trying to get some time with him, this is my little Caitlin. And you know what he wanted to do? He just wanted to walk with her. He just hung out with her. People were like out there trying to go, oh, can I get a little photo? Can I do whatever? And he's just like, here we go. This is all I need to be right now. Just with this little girl who's babbling rubbish. At it. Actually, that's the same girl that didn't want to spend four hours with me. So I reckon, you know, it's like, what's up, man? you like this guy. And he's a gentle giant. He's a beautiful man, you know, and with, with Jesus now. But for me, that is a picture because so many of us are ready to revere God. We're happy to have the first picture of God, the, 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 the all-powerful, amazing provider who all these things he does, but we're not ready to take a walk. You know, the greatest people who really understood God's heart in Scripture, don't make me go through a list of them, you can do them in your head. You know what the biggest thing was? It wasn't the massive, the amazing things that they did, although they did amazing things for God. It was that they walked with God. It, because they were one with Him because they, they, they understood Him as their Father. You know, no matter where it's at, people are feeling different things today on Father's Day. Yesterday, you know where I was at? With Eleanor and the team trying to help Rice and KL? We were at Sunway Lagoon. <laughs> Anyone like a bit of Sunway Lagoon in the house? This is, I love that place. It was beautiful. This sermon is brought to you by Sunway Lagoons. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and it was just phenomenal. And there was one point where this, the, one of the staff there was talking, I, I just really felt to pray for him. So the team prayed over him. And there was a moment when in the middle of prayer, I was just going to pray normal, whatever prayer, and then God was like, there's something up with family with this guy. And I, I stopped the prayer in the middle and said, it, how's it going with anything with family? And he just looked at me with this, so much emotion, I knew we hit something. And after a little pause, he said, my wife died. Three kids left. 
And we prayed over him and you could feel him feeling the Father's love in that moment. You know on the plane here, I sat next to a guy, I got the aisle seat and the window seat dude, he was trapped. (laughs) Have a look at this guy. He sat there and um, he was next to me and I got to pray, I got to talk with him, pray with him, talk to him about God and he was like, I can't get out. Going to the toilet was bad enough, now I'm snuck next to this really talkative Asian Australian. (laughs) But you know what? There was a moment where he just started pouring stuff out and partway through it, he said, I don't know why I'm telling all this stuff about my father. I've never even told my wife. And he poured it all out and he said, you know what? I like my dad. I would say I love my dad. He's provided so many things to me. Everything I've ever done, even in the hardest times, he'll be there, he'll give me a loan, he'll give me a car, he'll give me whatever I need. But he goes, I'm not close to him. And he longs for that closeness. And guess what I got to tell him? I got to talk to him about the prodigal son. And it was powerful for him. What I'm saying to you today is this. You know what he said? He said he was actually going back to India that day to meet his dad. I said, what would that be like? He said, mum will hug me. And I said, what will you do with your dad? He said, I'll bow. That's what, I mean, part of that's religious, but part of that's also how he thinks about it. He said he'll get down on his knees and he'll bow to honour him. I know some of you have got the bow bit sorted with God, the Father, God, but the Father bit today is what he's connecting. You know, for me, I want to ask you, what does it look like to have God, not just as your father, but as your daddy? As I finish up this verse here in Romans, is it Romans? Yes. I want you to read it, this, Romans 8, verse 15. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves. Everyone say slaves. So that you live in fear again. Everyone say fear. See, when you live as slaves, it moves to fear. Right? But the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. Everyone say Sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. Everyone say, Abba. Do you know what word you just said? You said the Aramaic word for? Father, but actually not quite. Yeah, come on, Miles, you big brain. Anyone else? Apart from big brain, Miles, anyone else? Sarah's like, yeah, you are a big brain. No, no. It means daddy. Daddy. It's actually quite beautiful. Do you know how some, some of the, you know, what are the people who, what's the name for, Sarah, you're the language person. What's the person who studies the root of languages? What, what's, that, what's that root, the language? Etymology. Oh, there, okay, big, she's a big brain. Etymology, that's the word I'm looking for. Who even knows what that word means? All right, and do you know the root word? They, they actually have discovered, they think they've discovered that Abba is so beautiful, this is cute, that they think that sound was such an ancient word, was just the, it's the first two syllables that babies make ah or ba and they just put it together how beautiful is that is God your ah ba when you can't even speak and all you can push out is a couple of syllables your first reaction the first way that you've been hardwired to do is look for love you know babies we've had four of them I talked to a guy once I remember after our first just when our first baby was about to be born and he's, he knows a whole bunch about child, uh, child psych, psych stuff. And he said this. He said, you know when a baby comes out of the womb? He said, you know they're always looking around like this? Everyone know what I'm talking about? They're like, and the, you know. And I, I'm like, he goes, do you know what they're, what they're doing? The child psychs have found this now. Do you know what they're doing? I'm like, I don't know, like experiencing light, looking around the world. If you're Asian, working out some mass problem already. Or, no. <laughs> what is it? He said, you know what the kid's doing? They've worked it out. They're looking for another pair of eyes. They're looking to find, because they're hardwired immediately, even though they're not Christian psychologists, they're hardwired to look for love, for relationships straight away. And that's how they get it. They get it through eyes. They find another and they lock in. We have been designed to be loved. Yet we go through our life living like we are people out in the field. What does it look like today? What will it look like for you, for you, for you, for you, to know that you are loved? I wish I could go to every single one of you and hold you by the shoulders and say, do you understand your father loves you? And you're like, yeah, I get it. No, 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 you don't get it. Do you understand? He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. And you think, no, I'm unlovable. Or, oh, no, I've never experienced that kind of love. Or, no, I, I, I know he loves me because he provides me. No, I'm saying he loves you just because you are you. Yeah? Three people like that. Do you understand that? I'm going to give God a cut because he loves me so much. And I'm okay to do that. 
and I'm going to tell you, I find it awkward. I honestly find it awkward. I've actually never stood on stage, I don't think, and never said, God loves me so much. Do you know why I find that awkward? Because you're not taught to do that when you're a young kid. You're not taught to be like, here I am, you know, lovable, you know, look at me. Right? You'd be like, you smile, ah, you know, don't, don't, you can't do that. You know what happened? But the truth is, I can stand here right now. Ready? I think it's a bit awkward. I'm, I'm struggling, struggling to say it. He loves me, me. So much. I preached about that love for 20 years, but that's the first time I can get up on stage and just tell you he loves me, and that's it. Because I don't need to bring anything to the table. And actually, all the ministry I've done is actually just doing the Father's work with him. He loves me. So I'm going to ask you one more time, and you can say, he loves me. We can say, I'm loved. Who are you? One more time, who are you? Just say it. Just say it really like you're not repeating me. Just say, I am loved. Who are you? Do you understand what I'm talking about? I can be a preacher for 20 years and I can only stand up here today and say, I am love. He loves me. He loves me. I'm so sorry, God, for the years I've wasted out in the field. I mean, I haven't been totally waste. I know that there have been good things, blah, 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 blah. But the truth is this. I'm not in the house half the time because I'm so out there busy. He loves you. Some of you here have never even tasted that love. Ever. And you're going to come forward and it's going to be a great start most of us have to come back to that today and there'll be a chance to do that in a minute you know the last time I preached here and I'll finish this story last time I preached here I was with my son Jacob and I'll show you these photos this was a really powerful place time for me the other kids have said oh I wish I could come to Malaysia with you because we want to eat durian but you know you know what he said I wish I could come to Malaysia with you because I want to come to HDBB and I'm thinking why you've only been there once you know, I'm a bit insecure because my daughter doesn't want to spend four hours with me, but <laughs> why? Why do you want to come here? Because in that middle photo, there was a moment just before the first service where he went on his knees and he said to me, I think God, my Heavenly Father God, has just told me to say something. And I've never seen him go on his knees like this. He was just one week before his 13th birthday and he was right here. And you know what? People came up to me and said, oh, you must be so proud. And you know what? I was like, yeah, I am. But you know what? I'm mostly, because he got up and ministered to people. But you know what? I'm mostly, I just was so happy because he, he heard from his father. I don't mean me. You understand? So often fathers can get, away, get in the way of that. I want you to be honest. So I'm going to be honest with you. You know how things are going for me? I'm struggling through this identity thing right now about being a son. I'm sick of all the producing of how good... I didn't even show you a rice video movement. Didn't show you that I dropped even the photo from the last service. Don't care. It's good. Rice is good. But it's not who I am. You with me? Let's be honest. You know what happened? I messaged my wife yesterday at Sunway Lagoon. I was there and I said to her, how are you doing? Yeah, good husband, right? Husband, check in. Husband, check in. Good, good. She wrote, terrible. She goes, how are you? I said, oh, not very good here. It's somewhere looking. <laughs> so, so, la, not so good, uh, okay, okay, la. You know? And she's like, oh. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, two of the kids, two of the four kids, I mean, she said, two of the four kids, they're driving me nuts. Drive me crazy. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, you know, yeah. Things aren't good here either. <laughs> Just in the water, <laughs> you know. And I said, look, I'll pray for you, right? That's a good thing the husband to say. And guess what happened? I did pray for her. A few hours later, I wrote to her and I said, how are things now? And she said, you know what? Really good. And I said, wow, Why? And she said this beautiful thing. She said, Jacob, I'm, I'm, I'm making him sound like the angel kid. He's got some real issues as well, right? But let's just talk about Jacob now. She goes, Jacob, 
came to me and started being really kind. He stepped up and he just helped me. And part of me was like, of course, most of you were like, oh, good boy, you good boy, la, right? But you know what actually I felt? I got teary and I wrote a message to Jacob. And I said, Jacob, because you know, I said, Jacob, normally looking after mom is my job, it's all our job, but really that's a big part of my life. But daddy's not home. And you looked after mum. You stepped, you decided to take that. And Jacob wrote, sent me a little video and he said, you know, he misses me and, and, mom, and Amy was in it too. And it was beautiful. Because you know what was most beautiful to that? He stepped up and he did my job. This is what any ministry, what anything you do, what anything you do at your workplace, what, all of that is a function of the fact that you are doing things just because you're a son, because you're a daughter. And so as I finish, I want to wish you a truly, truly happy Father's Day. Do you know what I mean by that, right? I mean, make today the happiest day you've ever had because he truly is your father. And know right now, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you?